What are you going to do with this archive? <laughs> well, actually, we traced the Khan line back to the late 1600s. Right. And the Honeyset line, and I think most my mother's side, Stanley line, back to similar sort of period. So it's, it's getting quite yeah, impressive. I say, yeah, yeah, but I say, what are you going to do with it? Oh, well, publish it, probably. <laughs> I wish I'd been a little bit older so that I could have remembered more instead of being so very tiny. I could have only got flashes of insight now. Mm. Mm. I could have enjoyed it far more if I'd been a bit older. <laughs> I was the youngest of eight mm -hmm. and thoroughly spoiled, of course, because and all, still all my brothers mm -hmm. and problems still, <laughs> still are. Yes, I don't doubt that. I won't question that. <laughs> mm. Oh yes, that's the only photograph of the eight of us. Oh right, okay. Ever taken, and that was on the bank holiday, on the bank holiday Monday, and it was freezing. <laughs> and we went for a picnic down to the beach. And of course, we've got uh, our, uh, blazers and coats on. It was perishingly cold, and the boys went fishing off the sea, off the beach. <laughs> Good things and had more of its good things, really, being a big family. Mm. Well, as you probably know yourselves, we were all, when we were all concentrated in the one area, unlike yeah. today, which is you know the world has yeah. expanded now, hasn't it? But we were all within easy yeah. reach of each other, other, and therefore stayed as a fam large family for yeah. a long, long time. Oh yes, it would have been for her, not for me. Oh. That was high school. I didn't. I couldn't. Mother couldn't afford to take it to any more into <laughs> So she didn't want to part with her baby. Yeah. <laughs> Nora and I both were um, neither local. Of us. Neither of us went to boarding school. All the others did. Oh, wow. William, Robert, your dad, and uh, your uncle Tom. Yes, because. Mm. Um, he worked, worked at, for the Duke of Porthor at Arundel Castle. Right. I don't know if Uncle Tom was there as well. Can't remember. Oh, they could, but but mm. Dad certainly was at mm -hmm. um, Arundel. Mm -hmm. And then he worked his way down along the coast to Hurstmasseu. <laughs> That's where he met Mother, of course. All right. Yeah. What's your sad life? I never really knew him that well, because of course he was, I was my, both parents were quite old when I was born. Mm. And the, my, my, my best recollection, well, two recollections of him, when I was quite small, I used to get into his bed and he used to tell me a story of a, um, a St. Bernard dog. Mm -hmm. That came over from Switzerland. Isn't that strange how mm -hmm. I got a Swiss... You know, uh, I've got the, you know, the Swiss side of remembrance I have of him particularly was I, if I, if I got into, if he was home from work and I was being naughty and he used to sit in this chair and when I was being stroppy and I don't know why I was, but he used to bend down to his, take his slipper off. And that was the signal for me, and I shot up those stairs. <laughs> because, and he used to come up there with his slipper. <laughs> Never did anything with it, because I'm long gone. Shut the door, and that was it, you know. And he also had eczema, or dermatitis. And he used to have that in his, on his arms. And at night, in the evenings, when it was warm and the fire was lit, he used to bother him, and, he, and he, mm. he, I can see him sitting there, and this powdery stuff all... Wow. Yes. Coming home from the market when they lived in Hurstman Oh, yes, yes, well, that's before I was born, of course, because mm. I wasn't born in Hurstman no. And Mother and, and Dad had this, Dad had this little small holding, I think you'd call it today, mm. wouldn't you? Yeah. Growing vegetables and things which he used to take to Hailsham Market mm -hmm. and with the, with the horse, the old white horse it was, and cart. And he loaded up on the 
on a, whatever day it was, market day, take this and took this horse with the things in the in the back to market. And then when he'd sold them all, he'd come home tired out. And he used to sleep all the way home with this and the old dog would plod, all plod home all by himself, you know. <laughs> yes, no, of course he didn't have cars in those days, so it wasn't a I suppose it wasn't a problem, but he all knew where to go and when to stop. And then mother used to come out and wake him up and <laughs> yes. Do you know how he became a Quaker? No. No, no, it was no, much better than no. yeah, yeah. Because by it the was, time, it yeah. was, I, I presume, went back the same as it did with Mother, because um, she's a, a lifetime Quaker. I mean, mm. well, the her parents, Quaker. all mm. the Hunnesets were. <coughs> also a woman of many parts, wasn't she? Yes, she, she was. Well, you had to be, I suppose, in those mm. days, if you've mm. got a family. Oh, and um, she used to do all the cooking. And... That, that's the first time we ever had stinging nettles for dinner, or stinging nettles. For, for, but she never told anybody until she'd until they'd eaten them and they were delicious. <laughs> we had mother mm. used to make um, rugs with s strips of sacking and stuff like that to put on the floor mm. because it was so bitterly cold. What was Annington Road like? Very small. <laughs> oh, very small indeed. There were only three bedrooms, and one of those was quite small. So we were three girls in a bedroom. Never thought anything different. I mean, it was. Oh, my three girls were in a bedroom. Yes. I mean, two of us in the double bed. Mm -hmm. My eldest sister, Joyce, and me. And Phil had the little bed along by the wall there. And we had nasturtiums on the wallpaper all over the room. <laughs> yeah, when, when, when all the family were there, the boys used to put three chairs along in the dining room mm -hmm. and, and then a plank of wood mm -hmm. across the three chairs for everybody to sit on. Because <laughs> Hugh said that your father made all of that furniture. Yes. And then the the box that you sat on around the table had all his tools in it. Oh, right. Yeah. And we had the first telephone at Angel Road that had ever been heard of. Nobody had heard of a telephone before. And he, because he was a member of Lloyd's, the insurance base people, right. they installed the phone and then he had to contact them as soon as there was a wreck. I'm oh, sure yeah. if that rockets used to go off. Oh, yes. And yeah. um, they all have, always had sent three rockets up for a wreck. And the third one went, he had to get on the phone to Lloyd's to um, report it. Yeah. And that was that was something that, I mean, I was only at school. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't really understand it, but I understand it more now. Mm. How important it was, but how he got into that, I've no idea, and how long it lasted, I've no that? idea. Uncle Hugh, yeah. all right, that was that was him, and he'd have a go at all sorts of different things. Yeah. He had a go at a state agency and mm. auctioneering and yeah. um, gardening, that sort of thing during the yeah. war, which he did and took an interest in. Mm. Yeah, he's a man of yeah. many interests. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He said he was always the one that got blamed if anything went wrong. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're probably rightly so, and I shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> well, you are talking to his sister. What yes. happened to Nora by then? She went, she le she went away to a an, an, an nursing career. Mm. She left very early on, because I was quite small, because mm. I got a thorn in my finger at one, and I wouldn't let anybody touch it until she came home. <laughs> Because she was a nurse, mm -hmm. and she was uh, the only one that was allowed to get it out. Because she was 20 so. odd years older than you, wasn't she? 18. 18, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Joyce was 21 years older than me. She mm. was at college when I was born. Mm. But Nora was away, and she, she, cause she did her training, three years nursing, living in, because you had to in those days, there was no living in. And then she did her midwifery at Aldershot. No, Maidstone, I think it was. She did her midwifery. Yeah. Addington Road, of course, that 
was empty for some time. The beautiful furniture we had there, beautiful furniture. Mm. I can see it now. And it got, it all got vandalized and dis, and it, and, and, and so much disappeared of our possessions. We didn't mm. have anything at all to come back to at all. We had to start right from scratch after the war, of course. Mm -hmm. And everybody who was not combatant had to move out of the area. Oh. And you had to move away because it was because of the invasion. Mm -hmm. And the only people allowed were the um, um, people like Red Cross or doing any sort of um, war work. Course, right. which is yeah. why the boys all had all stayed yeah. because they all went into went Red Cross and that was all great. And um, and the mother and father, my mother and father moved to um, Bex Hill, where her sister had a nursing home, and they oh, moved right. into this big place called Charters Towers. Yeah. It had big grounds. Aunt Ada's nursing home had to be evacuated because she was in Bet's Hill and moved out. And so she got this place called Charters Towers, which was an old school, and moved her patients into Charters Towers. Mother and father went there. My father did the garden and mother did the cooking. Mm. Do you remember Eastbourne during wartime? Yes. Mm. What was that like? But not so well as because uh, I was at Hastings during the war, most yeah. of the war until until after, mm -hmm. until towards the end of the war. But it was not a not a happy place at all because for one thing, you used, it's the same as with the Hastings. They used to go over the planes used to go over for the raids on the big cities, and then come back and unload all the bomb bombs that they hadn't used on the coast, of course. Right. So that was not very good during mm. the war. Mm. It wasn't nice at all. Mm. And we used to have a lot of those doodle box things. Right. And I spent many a time in the gutter if I'd been caught out when one of these things came over and, and you had to lie down. And <laughs> that wasn't very nice <laughs> either. No. 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 And <coughs> well, I suppose it's like everywhere. But you were nursing, mm -hmm. weren't you, during the war? Yes. And we used to get the patients. They used to use the yeah, the white rock caves. That's right. Oh, the Hastings. Yeah. 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 As as area shelters, and then the people who used to come up, especially the children, they used to bring them up all covered in lice and. And suffer with bronchitis and all sorts of, you know, damp things. Not mm. good. But, you survived, there was the other side to it. You know, we used to go to dances and, and, and fingers crossed that nothing happened. No bombs fell while you were having a, going to a dance or something. Yes, it was very much lived for today. I came back in to, would it be? Mm -hmm. um, You'd have been 20. Mm. Yes, that's when I was 20, and that was just before I had my 21st birthday, which was a bit of a... Yes, I, I got out of Hastings as soon as I could. I was there for three years. And um, and I came, came back to a salary of five pounds a week. And I thought I was me, absolutely, absolutely, because I only had 19 and 11 pence a month when I was at Hastings in training. So I've got my keep, of course, mm -hmm. accommodation. But when I got five pounds, I thought, wow, so this, is, this is the life. <laughs> but then you had to pay for your keep and your accommodation, didn't you? <laughs> No, no, really. Were you no. living? In, were you living? In, uh, with yeah. No, I was living in at Southfields Nursing Home, oh, right. where, I, where I was employed, surgical nursing home. No, I didn't pay. I don't remember paying anything. Mm, wow. Well. Yes, that would have been paid for by the, the nursing home. Yeah, well, I'm told. Yeah. Mm, yeah. 
Didn't know you were surgical nurse. But we yeah, we, we had, they had this small theatre there. And I can remember this old Dr. Turner used to come in and, and carve people up just for the theatre. She shake fun of it, you know. He used to do these little parts of these like this, no tomorrow, just to get his feet. And he had such a temper, and he would throw an instrument across the, across the theatre. It was only a small theatre, too. And he would, you know, he'd lose his temper in no time flat if he didn't have, wasn't presented with the right instrument at the right moment. It's funny, I can remember him. Mm. And do you remember Bobkin Adams? I remember the name. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm. He, he was very young. Yes, and he was... He was around while, while I was there, and he had one of his patients in there. And she locked herself in the room, and he, she, she was an alcoholic. And we had to send for him, because we couldn't get into the room. And he came in, and he, was, and he charged up those stairs, and he was puffing and panting. And he got his shoulder on the door and says, Mrs. Herbert, let me in! Because <laughs> he was Scottish, of course. <laughs> Good accent then, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Herbert. And he threw himself until he finally broke the lock and, and went in and collapsed on the bed with a heart attack. But he was notorious. I mean, he was... Was he bumping people off or, or yeah, interfering well, well, with them? Yes, or, um, there was yeah, something was yes he of... used to get, the whole, the, get them to make their wills over to him. Yes. And he was a very wealthy man. Yeah. <laughs> yes, if you if you Google Bodkin Adams, you get the lowdown oh, on oh, him. Yes. Right, yes, I remember him. You yes. Do. The Labour Exchange directed me up to the old fever hospital in Eastbourne that was functioning in those days. And there were all the separate different different fevers. Because mm. everything was notifiable in the measles and Scarlet fever, all those were notifiable. Mm -hmm. Used to have to go out in this blue ambulance with gowns, masks, and um, all dressed up, you know, and to fetch the men from their homes. Yes, and there was one ward, Collins and Row, was divided off into cubicles. Some of them, some of them had a whole ward, a whole building for one fever. But there was one that had cubicles, and that's mm. where I finished up. And you know, we had at one time, we had a folio mm -hmm. in an iron lung in one cubicle. We had a sailor with diphtheria, which was very infectious. We had a typhoid, and we had several chicken poxes in a, in a little ward at the end there, about three beds in. And we never got any cross infection at all, wow. ever. And I think that that was really remarkable. Mm. All in the one building. And it's a case of going in each cubicle, dressing up, mm -hmm. doing what you had to do with them, and then it all had to go and fresh. It was hard work, but it was, mm. it was profitable because it, we didn't get any cross infection. Did you have anything to do with the Carl and Son business, or know what happened to that? Um, well, uh, just that Uncle Leslie took over from my father, of course, and Uncle Byrne was joined in to the firm as an electrician because he was qualified. He was, um, you know, proper, proper apprentice and qualified mm -hmm. electrician. He did all the electric side of it. And, you know, in those days, he did all their work on a hand truck from place to place. Everything was put on this hand truck yeah. with the buckets on the hooks mm -hmm. underneath and pushed yeah. from one job to another job, all on the hand cart. Amazing. Yeah. That never seemed amazing then, but I mean, it's just yeah. looking back, you think, Christ, how did they do it, you know, mm -hmm. in all weathers? Well, after Uncle Leslie died, of course, he would sort of semi-retired and it all just fizzled away then. Mm. As things do, but he did a lot of work uh, building. Well, you know, he built Ferris mm -hmm. up in um, yeah. Yeah. in Wellington, where, yeah. where his South Gable, where he, he, he built, for his yeah. for his himself and his family, he built 